Welcome back to another episode of FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. I'm Craig Haley, along with co-host Gary Reasons, and we've arrived. The season is here. We started last week with six teams testing the water in, in week zero, and now everybody's jumping into the pool of week one. Gary, we've arrived. Well, we have. Football is here, Craig. Good to, good to have a full week of college football. The FBS guys are kicking off. The FCS is going to be prominent once again. It's going to be a fun football season. Indeed. Gary, uh, Seth Biley and Graham Bell are our producers, as you know. Uh, you can find FCS delivered in many places uh, for your podcast platforms. We're on Amazon, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and many others. And you can find us on YouTube. All you have to do is search for FCS Delivered. Now, in today's episode, we're going to briefly talk about week zero last week. There were three games. We'll look ahead to week one, many great matchups. And Gary and I are going to build on some predictions that we made last year for the in, uh, last week for the entire season. Uh, Gary, as you know, last week there were three games. Uh, 20th ranked team, Mercer, in, in the stats perform poll. Uh, they won 17-7 over North Alabama. They played down in the FCS kickoff in, in Montgomery, Alabama. A little sluggish effort for Mercer for being a ranked team. You know, uh, UAlbany beat Fordham 34-13. to Very impressive for the Great Danes. Uh, Reese uh, Poppenbarger, their, their quarterback, four touchdowns. Uh, the defense was terrific for UAlbany, all those sacks. And then we also had our first uh, FedEx ground FCS national game of the week, which was uh, the MEX WAC Classic, Jackson State looking ultra impressive, uh, Gary, 37-7 over South Carolina State. Your impressions? Yeah, I like that last game, Craig. You talked about uh, that that classic game, and certainly there, uh, you know, Jason Brown really did a, had a really good good game last week for for excuse me <coughs> excuse me for Jackson State kicking it off with 356 yards. He had three touchdown passes, it just kind of took off. And that ball game was pretty much over uh, following the third quarter. So uh, it was a great, great fun game to kick off and watch that one. And uh, the other two you mentioned, Craig, also looked at Puffenbarger, and he had a very good ball game. And that defense, as you said, talked to, about getting after the quarterback. They had eight sacks in that game for UA, and that was pretty cool. It was good to get the season going. Can't believe it's here, but now everybody's ready for week one. If you're joining us for the first time on FCS Delivered, where have you been? This is our fifth episode. And uh, one of the things we want to tell you about is the support of uh, FedEx Ground for, for the FCS, their sponsorship here. Uh, they sponsor the uh, Top 25 uh, Stats Perform poll, uh, this podcast, FCS Delivered, the weekly awards, and Gary will be out on campus uh, presenting one each week the season-ending banquet with those awards, obviously the Legacy Awards, the Walter Payton, uh, the Buck Buchanan, the Eddie Robinson, the Jerry Rice, also the FedEx Ground Doris Robinson Scholar Athlete Award. That's uh, always a, a terrific award to honor somebody for on the field and off the field achievements. Now, one of the things we talked about last week were, were uh, season uh, predictions. And Gary and I, this week, let's talk some of the legacy awards, starting with the Walter Payton for the FCS Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, last year, Lindsey Scott Jr. of, of uh, Incarnate Word, UIW won. 37th year for this award, Gary. Who are, you, who are you picking this year? Well, it's a big field. You know, there's a lot of great players at the FCS level. You know, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago about what positions we're going to be looking at, quarterback, wide receiver, running back. Those are the guys that kind of percolate to the top when you start talking about offensive players. And, you know, Walter Payton, you know, what he's meant to football really at all levels uh, of football and what a, what, what a great namesake to have. Uh, this season, I think I'm going to go back with a quarterback, Craig, and I, I think the, the guy that possibly is going to be there at the end is from Holy Cross. I, I think that Matt Sluka is probably going to have a pretty good, solid season again, and I see him leading the Patriot League and, and just putting up some outstanding numbers again. So if I had to have my, my pick uh, early season here going into the Walter Payton Award, uh, I think I'd pick uh, Matthew Sluka. That's a very good pick. Uh, Matthew Sluka, I, I consider him uh, immensely. Uh, I probably have him number two on my list, Gary. Uh, you know, How he's got two opportunities. He's, he's <laughs> terrific. I mean, if it wasn't Tim, for Tim DeMarant last year in the Patriot League, people would have just been 
all over Matthew Sluka uh, for, for what he did nationally. 2,000 passing yards, 1,000 uh, rushing yards. It was the it was the 15th time that happened in a season with for the FCS. So I think that's a great pick, Gary. I'm going to stick quarterback too. We've seen how that's been a great run in recent years. It was once running backs. Cooper Cup kind of broke up the quarterback run, but I'm going to go with Michael Hires of Samford. Uh, he was fourth in the Walter Payton Award voting last year. Uh, tremendous year. I think it was 36 touchdowns and, and four interceptions. I mean, that ratio is ridiculous. And he led Sanford to the Southern uh, Conference title. They went deep into the playoffs, you know, made it to the quarterfinals, national quarterfinals. So Michael Hires is going to be my pick. But I, I tell you what, Matthew Sluka, whew, that's a great pick, Gary. All right, now let's talk Buck Buchanan Award. I think I might know who Gary's picking, but we'll see. This is the 29th <laughs> year for the for the uh, National uh, Defensive Player of the Year Award. Um, last year, it was uh, Zeke Vandenberg from, from Illinois State uh, was our winner down in Frisco, Texas. I think I may know, Gary. Who's your pick this year? Well, there's probably not a whole lot of lot of secret here. I really like a, a young uh, linebacker. I think it's John Pius. John Pius is, is going to be the guy that most people are going to look to at the FCS level as a linebacker who kind of sets the table, I think, this year. William & Mary, you know, finals last year, he was there with us in Frisco. But I think he's going to sit atop the CAA and have a great season. So I just look at John Pius as that guy that possibly is going to be there at the end when we start handing out the hardware. If he hey, if he plays to form and, and uh, you know, William & Mary does exactly what they did a year ago that we all expect they will, I think that John Pius has a really, really strong chance at winning that Buck Buchanan Award. John Pius, he's definitely an NFL draft candidate, Gary. And I'm looking at one who's maybe an NFL draft candidate the following year, Central Arkansas, David Walker, a defensive end. I mean, he just gets into backfields. I think it was 22 tackles for loss last year, just, you know, creating havoc. Uh, this year, the, the Central Arkansas is in the United Athletic Conference, the, the A-Sun and, and Wacker together again uh, with a new name. I think he's just, you know, somebody you have to – you know, double team on the edge. I mean, he can just move in and, and just destroy an offensive game plan. So I'm going David Walker here for the Buck Buchanan Award. Now, those two are the Peyton and the Buchanan, Gary. We, as you know, we've had watch lists. The Eddie Robinson Award, we don't have a preseason watch list. We kind of let the season play out uh, before, you know, we, we select the finalists. But you and I did give some examples last week of who, who could be in the mix and, and, Let's go ahead and make a prediction here, Gary. Well, you know, this is going to be kind of a far-fetched pick. No, not really. <laughs> I'm not really going too far off, off, the, off the cliff here. Uh, I think that as South Dakota State, and they have the type of season that we all think that they can, I think their new head coach, first-year head coach, Jimmy Rogers, uh, I think that they're going to people are going to see what he does to keep that team uh, together and pulling together in 2023 to have a great season. I think that he possibly is going to get the nod at the end of the year, because here's why it's it's great to ascend and get to the top of the of the game at the FCS level. Everybody wants to do that. And right now we're calling uh, South Dakota State to be in that in that uh, category. But, you know, to be able to focus on a team and keep your team there in a second year and win a back-to-back -back national championship, if Jimmy Rogers and South Dakota State get that done, I think he's going to be a very, very strong candidate for a first-year head football coach to win that A.D. Robinson Award. If Coach Ro Rogers does that, uh, and he certainly is in the mix, I mean, that would follow up with John Stiegelmeyer, who won the award last year in his final season at South Dakota State. I guess the most recent first year coach to do that would be Troy Taylor, uh, Sacramento State in 2019, uh, just turned around that program. Uh, obviously, uh, the next winner, uh, Coach Prime, or, or two years later, uh, Deion Sanders, he was coming off that shortened spring season. So he wasn't in his first season. It was his first full season, though, that when he won two years ago. So I love that pick. I mean, I think Jimmy Rogers has a chance to, to lead them to, to another national title. Uh, I'm going to uh, go Bob Chesney of, of Holy Cross. Uh, he tied for fourth last year in the, in the Eddie Robinson Award voting. He's he's made a he's created a dynasty with Holy Cross in the Patriot League. They they had struggled for a few years. He's gotten them back on top. This if they win the Patriot League 
this year. It would be their fifth straight title. Never has happened before in the Patriot League. They've had two years uh, beating an FBS opponent. They have two chances this year in, in Boston College and Army. So their schedule is tougher. But if he can navigate through that, I- I'm going to go Bob Chesney as the, as the one who could get it done for the Eddie Robinson Award. Now, I, I, obviously, at the National Awards Bank, we have Banquet. We have two other awards, uh, the Jerry Rice Award. Last year, uh, the winner was, was Giovanni McCoy, the National Freshman of the Year, the Idaho uh, quarterback. During the season, Gary, we'll have a watch list, midseason perhaps, yeah. uh, for the best freshman candidates, and then eventually will lead to a finals list. The Doris Robinson Scholar Athlete Award, which is uh, sponsored by FedEx Ground. That uh, it, we pick at the end of the season. Each conference... Uh, will nominate its finalists and then uh, as opposed to a national vote uh, on our national awards panel, that one will pick internally at Stats Perform. Uh, terrific uh, award there. Jake Chisholm, uh, the Dayton running back, won last year. Uh, really, really just amazing stories, these athletes who win our Doris Robinson Award. Gary, we're going to go to a break. And we, when we come back, we're ready to discuss week one of, of the FCS season. This is FCS Delivered presented by FedEx Ground. Rehearsals for the school play were really coming along. Bigger smile, Mr. Squirrel. Until a custodian accidentally threw away the costumes. Oh no. Everyone was rattled. Miss Garrity forgot how to play. And the queen of the hedgehogs almost quit. Find a new queen! But replacement costumes were shipped with FedEx. And with added peace of mind from picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. Welcome back to FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. Gary Reasons and I are, are here to talk week one. Uh, here's a big schedule, Gary. Thursday night through Sunday, 89 games involve FCS program programs, and 42 of them are against FBS opponents. Are you ready for this slate, Gary? Yeah, I, I think it's always fun to have these types of ball games throughout the season. You know, you, you know, 42 games against FBS opponents, which means the little brother's going against the big brother and kind of see if you can knock him off. And you're going you're to see some things out there this week, and uh, we'll have our eye on them. You know what stands out, Gary, is on, on opening night or opening afternoon, the national anthem, when everybody's lined up, I, I just think – it, 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 there's such pride that these players and coaches know, uh, and, and there could be new players on a team, new coaches. They just know this off season, they've worked so hard, the build up in, in training camp. I just think that's a big moment. Does that stand out to you? Yeah, it is. You know, you kind of put things in perspective and this is kind of the payoff time for all of the players and their preparation, the coaches, Everything that's gone into it, both in the spring and in the summer, of what you lead up to. There's new players on campus. You want to find out how they all fit into to the to the football team. And you know, it's the first time that you're going to really play a game that means something. You're through with the scrimmages, you're through with the practices, and it's time to get down to business. Now, if you look at our stats reform uh, preseason top 25, I mean, the top five teams are all in action this week. Uh, it starts at the top with the national champion, South Dakota State, uh, number one in our preseason poll, unanimous. Your guy for the Eddie Robinson Award, Jimmy Rogers, makes his debut, kind of eases into it a little bit. They're playing a Division II opponent, uh, Western Oregon. Uh, obviously, the Jackrabbits should roll there with that offense. But number two, North Dakota State, uh, has a tough game with, with Eastern Washington. East, Eastern Washington's, you know, a, a blue blood program that had a bad year last year. They're playing at U.S. Bank Stadium, the home of the Minnesota Vikings. First time there's a collegiate game there. I think it could be a fun game, Gary. Yeah, it's an exciting game, a chance for these college players to play in, a, in an NFL stadium, which is really pretty fun. Uh, North Dakota State probably should be should prevail here. Eastern Washington, I think that they're still searching a little bit for themselves. They've got a new quarterback there. And and, and Kiko Vesperis and, you know, their defense, Craig, as you, you've talked about, you know, a couple of times before that they need to have a little better defensive effort on that side of the ball. So I think this is one that North Dakota State could comfortably win that ball game, but uh, it's going to be a fun environment for that one. 
Yeah, North Dakota State's obviously going to try and run the ball. I mean, Eastern Washington's rush defense was, wasn't very good last year, and we know about the buys and offensive line and, and, and what they do with just, you know, running the, down the field time and time again. But, you know, when this schedule – when this game was, was made, Gary, and scheduled – you know, you probably expected it to be a, a premier Eastern Washington team. It's not quite, but they're going to be better than last year. What's the difference in week one playing a, a risky kind of game versus, you know, maybe like in a Western Oregon that, that South Dakota State's playing? Yeah, I, when, you, when you're playing teams that you're, you know, very competitive with, which you feel like you can, you know, possibly if you don't do the things that you need to do in, your, uh, in, in the ball game that you could possibly lose this game, uh, you don't want to get there. And North Dakota State, they definitely have an eye, eye on where they want to be. And we all think that they're kind of the elite team. As we talked about, Eastern Washington, they're still kind of ascending. They had the you know, offseason year ago, only three victories. So they're trying to get back to the to where they, they want to be, which is a prominent team. And, you know, I think that uh, this one sets up for North Dakota State to possibly do very, very well. We talked about their run game and strength. I think that that's going to be an asset to them throughout the entire season. Well, number three is uh, Montana State. They're at home against U Utah Tech. Bobcats should should win there. They've won 20 straight home games, which is the active high in the FCS. So the Bobcats should do that. Number four, though, is William & Mary. They're playing a conference game here right away. It's Campbell's inaugural CAA football game. They've moved into that conference. Should this be the Tribe? Uh, I think the tribe is going to have a, a good shot to, to take care of business here. This is one where they're going to set the table for themselves. We all think that William and Mary is going to have a, a superlative season and just go out and get it done. You know, Campbell, it's going to be a little, little tough sledding for them getting into the new conference play. And uh, I think that this last year's game, which the William and Mary did win 37-21 out there, it, it gives them an opportunity to uh, continue down that path. Of, of you know just getting things done again, but I think William and Mary looks looks like they're going to be the clear victor here. And there's also our, our uh, final game of the top five teams. Uh, Holy Cross number five is hosting Merrimack. Uh, that's a game that Merrimack won two years ago. Uh, Crusaders came back and won last year, so this is sort of the rubber match. Matthew Sluka obviously will be there for uh, Holy Cross. Bob Chesney. These are all people we've been talking about today. So. The, this, the weekend also wraps up with Jackson State versus Florida A&M down in Miami. Uh, that's been a big game. It's meant everything in the SWAC East uh, because the, the last two seasons, Jackson State uh, has gone undefeated in the SWAC to get to the conference championship game. Florida A&M has not lost after losing a season opening game to uh, Jackson State in the SWAC. So this is a big one, Gary. Yeah, it is. It really is. This is two football teams that are really good. Uh, I see Florida A&M and Jackson State as two of the, the top teams in that conference. So certainly there is going to be an opportunity here for one of these teams to kind of rise up to the top. We saw a little bit about Jackson State last week with Jason Brown and had a very good ball game. And Florida A&M, I think that they're just poised to continue to have their success. So it's really going to come down to the team that makes the least amount of mistakes. And this one, Craig, is going to get the win, going to get the W. I'm anticipating your pick in, in, in the final segment of our show today because that I think I'm wavering on on what I thought going into the year after last week. So we'll see. Now I saw your enthusiasm earlier with with, with the FCS versus FBS games, and I think that kind of galvanizes the whole F, FCS to trying to beat the big brother in Division One. Forty two games, as you mentioned, this weekend alone. I think it's 118 this year that those kind of matchups. Eight wins last year for the FCS over the FBS, uh, seven of those eight winners went on to the playoffs, which is always a good barometer. There are some impossible games here. Obviously, Tennessee State going to Notre Dame this week. Notre Dame has never played an FCS team or an HBCU team before. You know, uh, UT Martin, you've talked about them before going to Georgia, the two-time defending national champion and number one going into the year. But there are some possible ones here this week, Gary. What stands out as a possible upset for the FCS? Yeah, I, I think that there's going to be several games, actually, that are really going to have an opportunity to do that. But I tell you, I'm going to take one team here that, that I think that is going to have an opportunity to, to get a W here. And I'm going to take UIW, okay? New head coach, Clint Killow, new quarterback, Zach Calzada. I think that they, that they go and uh, – 
go take care of the business with the miners. UTEP is, has got a, a tough road ahead of them, I think, with this football team because they're pretty, pretty dangerous. And the miners, they lost last week in the week zero to Jacksonville State, hasn't got off the best start. So I think that this is an opportunity for Clint Killow and, and that, uh, that UIW football team to you know, get, a, get a nice win here against an FBS opponent. I haven't seen it, but I'd have to think U, UIW might even be a favorite here. I don't know. It's 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 certainly a close game. Uh, it would be the third straight year for for UIW to get it done versus the FBS. I, I like it. I I think that's the one to focus on this week for for a possible upset. I mean, there's others. There's Rhode Island is at Georgia State. Rhode Island uh, won an FBS game two years ago. They beat UMass. Uh, Northern Iowa is so used to playing Iowa State under. Coach Mark Farley, I think they could get it done. There was there was a stretch uh, at one point where Northern Iowa won three out of six under Mark Farley against Iowa State. So hopefully that you know that could happen here. Maybe a first timer this year, Gary. Do, do, any first time possibilities stand out for you? You know, I really haven't looked at it that way, Craig. I just kind of look across the board and say, hey, who has the best opportunity here to to get something? And I, I'm not really sure. Is it going to be Monmouth at uh, at FAU, you know, that's an opportunity there. Maybe Brian at UNLV. Uh, there's there's, there's a couple of games there that uh, might give their first one, but uh, we'll see how it all unfolds. But this is why you play college football, right? <laughs> Those are possibilities. I, I give you credit. I mean, I think they can get it done. I mean, will Jaden Sheridan go over 100 yards for Monmouth, and does he have to, to beat FAU? Uh, yeah, he would definitely have to. I think he'd have to have a monster game. But you know what? They're going to focus on him. So they're going to have to have a have an opportunity to, you know, have some other players step up and, and make some plays. And that's really what it comes down to, Craig, which team makes the best, the most plays. And b- bottom line is they'll usually win. It would be kind of cool for Monmouth. Kevin Callahan's the only coach in program history. It's about 30 years now uh, with the Hawks. So we'll see if they get it done this week. We're going to take another break here, and we will be back with our final segment of FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. When someone accidentally threw away the school play costumes... Oh, no! Replacements were shipped with FedEx, and with picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. Welcome back to FCS Delivered, presented by FedEx Ground. I'm Craig Haley, along with Gary Reasons. This segment is going to be like a weekly staple. Pick them, kind of look at some uh, pivotal matchups of the week. So let's let's dive in, Gary. I mean, Sacramento State at Nichols. Obviously, it's Andy Thompson's debut for Sacramento State, coming off a huge year. Who do you like in this game? Well, with Andy Thompson, you know, he's a former defensive coordinator there different for last season. Yeah, the, he's improved the defensive culture. You know, they held their opponents to last year to only 19 points a game, which is great. But you know what? They're going to go into Thibodeau, Louisiana, which is a tough place to win. And this is going to be a close one. Um, but I do see the Hornets getting the best of the Colonels in this one. I think that uh, possibly going to get Sacramento State with a W on the road. Gary, if nothing else, I rely on you to say these city names in the Southland Conference because I struggle all the time. <laughs> Thibodeau, Villanova sure. and Lehigh. You know? <laughs> Villanova and Lehigh. That's like a backyard brawl. I think that's sort of big for the FCS. I like when you're playing your, your neighboring school. Uh, obviously, Villanova is, is favored here, but could the Mountain Hawks pull an upset? Uh, they've played forever, it seems like, you know, seven, eight times. And uh, it's, it's just like you're playing a team again. It's like a conference game that you just want to go out and, and do, do the best. You know, this is, to me, coin, Craig, it's a coin toss. So Villanova, Lehigh, just, just, uh, just pick one. <laughs> I'm going to go Villanova in this one. I, I think they're going to have a huge turnaround after, after last season. All right, we talked earlier about the taking on a risky opponent in week one. We have another example here. Uh, Austin P is at Southern Illinois. You could probably go either way with this. I'm I'm going Southern Illinois. Yeah, it is kind of one of those toss-ups, Craig. You know, um, I, I think I'm going to go with you, Craig. At home, Southern Illinois, they're going to have an opportunity. 
you know, a team coming in there with a little better pedigree in Austin P uh, have a chance to win here and, and make a statement. Well, it's Jeremy Chin bobblehead night for Southern Illinois. And he's, he's going on to a great NFL career uh, with the Carolina Panthers. So I, I think fans will, might come away happy regardless of the outcome. You and I talked earlier about uh, Jackson State and Florida A&M down in Miami. It's a Sunday spotlight on ESPN for the FCS. Whew, who are you picking? This is going to be a fun game. This may be the game of the week at the FCS level because of the. I think how good both of these football teams are. I'm going to give the nod to the team that has a win under their belt already. You know, in 2023, Jackson State got their win in the MIAC Classic just last weekend. I think that they 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 really showed me something that they've got a quarterback that can play, they've got running backs that can play, they've got wide receivers that are making plays, and they've got a defense that shows up to win. I think they're going to give Florida A and M all they can handle, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to pick Jackson State in that one. If I'm a rattler, I go gulp. They're here. I mean, else off season, everybody thought Florida A and M is is going to win against Jackson State, but boy. The Tigers look pretty good. I'll stick with my off-season pick of Florida A&M, but I don't feel too confident in it right now after last week. All right, now there's the FedEx Ground FCS game of the week. It's Eastern Washington versus North Dakota State. They're playing in U.S. Bank Stadium. Matt Entz is going for his 50th win. Does he get it? I say yes. Yeah, I think you're right, Craig. I think that they are going to prevail. Eastern Washington still trying to find themselves. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And I think that the, this is going to be a good opportunity for Eastern Washington to make a statement about their back in it. But at the end, I do think that uh, North Dakota State, they come away and the Bison are going to be happy about that. I think we're both in agreement that that UIW Incarnate Word gets it done against UTEP. Uh, I hope there's a multiple FCS winners over the FBS this week. But all right, let's look big picture now, Gary. Who are your fi- who are your final four matchups in national semifinals, and who do you think is going to win it all this year? Well, Craig, I, I kind of went back to my my top twenty five poll, and I, and I said, well, let's just take a look at my top four, five, or six teams. You know, so I had South Dakota State, North Dakota State, Montana State, UIW, and then Sacramento State. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hedge my bet here a little bit. I think that the the our our champion is going to come from that that group of five. Uh, but it could kind of be shuffled in any different way. But uh, I would see, a, I could see South Dakota State playing UIW and North Dakota State, uh, you know, playing Montana State in in the semis, and ultimately we'll have to play it off for there. It'll get get a get a winner. But uh, I'm still hanging with my my pick for the for the national champion being South Dakota State. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think a preseason poll. You're projecting the season, so yes, obviously. My top four, I think that's the final four. Um, I'm going to go with William & Mary at uh, South Dakota State in in a a national semifinal, South Dakota State winning. I think North Dakota State was number two in my poll. I'm going to have them beating Montana State, but that's a big one. You kind of want to avoid, you know, a a South Dakota State, the national champ in the semifinals. I I just see a repeat championship game of last year and, and a repeat of, of, of the national champion that the Jackrabbits, Jimmy Rogers, as you mentioned, your, your Eddie Robinson award pick. I think he could take them to an undefeated season. We'll, we'll see that they're not playing an FBS opponent. Neither is, are the Bison. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Now coming up on after week one, Labor Day, this coming Monday, we will have our first in-season uh, stats reform FCS top 25. We'll also have our players and and team of the week obviously presented by fedex ground and you'll be out on campus can you remind us about uh that initiative with fedex ground sponsorship well we have those five award winners every single week greg in the season so these are weekly national award winners offensive player defensive player special team player freshman of the week and also the national team of the week but from one of those five winners i'm going to select along with craig where I'm going to go each week. And I'm going to make a presentation to our national defense, our national uh, player of the week award. So I'm going to take FCS on campus and I'm going to be out on the road and I'm going to make that presentation on campus to one of those players each week throughout the entire season. So 
It's going to be a little bit about where's Gary this week and uh, where we're going, and it's going to be a fun ride. I'm, I'm looking very forward to it. I'm going to be traveling out uh, Labor Day evening to uh, to somewhere in this country, and I don't know where I'm going yet, which is which is really pretty interesting. So it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it because you're going to have some terrific stories and, and maybe a little jet jet lag too. But that, that's a just terrific. Uh, I look forward to it. And safe travels to you, Gary. And Good luck to all the teams here in, in week one and, and throughout the season. Uh, we want to thank FedEx Ground for, for uh, presenting Fed, uh, FCS Delivered each week. Seth Biley and Graham uh, Bell, our producers, Gary and I thank them. They, they do yeoman's work behind the scenes for, for making this hap happen. Gary, the anticipation is over. Everybody's jumping in. We've arrived to the 2023 FCS season. Whew, I'm ready. Are you? I am ready. I'm ready to get going. I think this is going to be a fun ride. It's going to be a lot of, a lot of games. You know, we'll talk a lot about it during the season here, and we'll see some things along the way that'll be very noteworthy. And uh, it's going to be a great season, Craig. Well, when we talk again, you'll be back from your first campus visit. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, FCS Deliver presented by FedEx Ground. We will see you next week after the Week One action.